Hi everybody, this is Joe Rebello for Rebello's Kempo Karate. In tonight's show, we're going to show you some footage from a seminar that I did recently in Colorado. Professor Robert Austin of the United Martial Arts Alliance International and Mr. James Denning, also of the UMAA, had contacted me about doing a seminar for their Kenpo camp in April of 2017. Uh, I was more than happy to oblige. Again, they were familiar with me through the internet and my different uh, exploits and YouTube videos as well as my presence on the internet. So I was very honored and privileged to uh, visit the Colorado area and be able to teach and instruct a, a series of seminars for their annual Kenpo camp. I hope you enjoyed this exploit into Ed Parker's American Kempo and the topic of Kempo grafting from different major techniques from Ed Parker's American Kempo, understanding the transition from master key movements and master key techniques, and also the topic of category completion, how various techniques complete various categories of motion. Now, without further ado, let's go to the UMAA Kempo Camp in Greenlee, Colorado. Dominic tries to bring his arm down. Anytime today, Dominic. Come on, work it hard. See how much hard work you had to do? Now watch. Anchor your elbow right there. Now do it. Real easy, right? Anchoring your elbow. Kempo Law, one of the foundations of our system. Let's do it together. Technique is called? Hooking wings. Hooking wings. What are wings? Elbows. I do the fucking chicken. <laughs> okay, right? I'm hooking my wings. So I step back, I hook the hands, and move it out of the way. Just enough so I can kick them in the groin. Their head's coming forward. If I don't stop that head, he's going to headbutt me in the nose. And that would stink. So I'm going to bring my head around, and I'm going to move his head out of the way, and I'm going to hit him with the hammer and rake with the back and knuckles of my hand. Then I'm going to loop over, and I'm going to move his head out the other way. And when I did the first one, his head turned down this way, so I'm going to pop him diagonally across the nose in the opposite direction, using my hand in the opposite way, and that's going to shatter his nose. I never his face. So right from there. Now, I shuffle in at this point. I come up, I come right up with an upward elbow, pop, popping his chin up. I then drop my hand down, hit him with the heel of my palm directly across the bridge of his nose. Man, I hit this guy's nose three times already. <laughs> He's got a hand right there, right there, across his face. So I hit from there, and then, again, before the tiger's claw, the tiger's paw. Hit, drop to a wide kneel, and rake. But see how that works? Yeah. You may have it slightly different, but again, hey, we're more alike than we are different. So now, one more time. Hook, kick, hammer, back fist, shuffle in, elbow up, and claw down. Some people do the shuffle, some people don't. Depending how close your opponent is to you. So what's the so what's the opposite of that? Well, I'll tell you what, we have the universal pattern, right? See, what if I didn't have a whole pattern? What if I only had the top part? If I take that top part and I flip it over and make the bottom part, I flip it upside down. Anybody tell me what technique this is upside down? The next what technique is hooking wings upside down? Anybody here got bowel compulsion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bowel compulsion is hooking wings upside down. Let's look and find out. Okay, watch. Let's say it together. Basic. In, in, out, out, up, up, down. Put your hand right there. Now actually, this is a defense against someone trying to do a hapkido or jujitsu pinning technique to you. So if I'm working with lovely Emily, come on up, Emily. I gotta make up for hitting her in the braces. All right, so she goes to push me. No, one hand. Uh, right hand push. I pin her hands. And then I kneel down. I'm so sorry, Emily, for hitting you earlier. And I can drop her like that. It's also taught in Hapkido and Jiu-Jitsu against a hair grab. Oh, rip out my hair. I have so little of it left. Please don't hurt me. And I bow and I drop her. So now, thank you, Emily. Appreciate it. So now I just put my hand up. Hey, man, don't hurt me. Don't harm me. And he goes, ha ha, I know how to Ha ha. And I go, so I go, you pin my hands. Push. I go, I go push you. You pin my hands, I'll pin yours. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right? So this is a really cool one, right? This is the one that's so passive, right? Your name, sir? Matthew? Come on, Matthew. So again, I'm going to go to push Matthew, and Matthew goes, ah, oh, oh, I'm going to put your hands and drop you to the ground. So I put him, he puts both his hands on top of me. So I put my hand on top of him. Ever played the game with, uh, Okay, you ever play the game with, uh, with baseball bat? Who's going to go first? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, gap on top. That's what we're doing here. So I don't know. Hey, look, I'm in trouble. Ha ha, I don't have keto. Ha ha, I don't know either. Shut up. <laughs> okay, you weren't slapped there. What's your thing? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, that's the key. So now, when I do this and he does that, well, I take his hand and then what? I take my hand and then I do a claw down. I do a reverse hand. You wearing a cup? Dude, we do cat balls. We are the most groin obsessed system <laughs> in the world. We find new and interesting ways to hit people in the crotch every single day. Right? Anybody watch, uh, anybody watch uh, Enter the Dojo? They're not, the they're the not allowed to watch yeah, that yet. Oh, no? You know what I call that in Kempo? A real good start. So anyway, so I want to hit the You pin my hands. I take past his hands. I pin his <laughs> And while I hold all that in place, I can extract his hand out. I hit him in the groin. Then I do an outward, downward, diagonal back knuckle to the inside of his thigh, spreading arm out that way. Then I do an inward, downward, diagonal thrust punch to the inside of his other leg, and then I can do an involuntary thrust And then I cross him over. Of course, I can always cross over to a spinning back kick and take him right out of his socks. David Jordan has a great one where he crosses over from here and does a jumping tornado kick to take the guy out. Visualize that one for a minute. So now, hey, let's put it all together. So now, what we'll do, we'll do bowel compulsion first. Push your hand out. Take your other hand, put it in front. See the plus sign, the cross like in the middle of the, of the patch? Drop down. Come up with the, the hand sword into the groin. Outward, downward, diagonal, back knuckle. We're making a figure eight. If you make a figure eight. Maybe too young for it. Remember Schoolhouse Rock and that stuff. I hit out diagonally, and then I punch. Then I cross and cover up once and twice. So again, we did in, out, up, down. Now we do the reverse order: down, up, out, in. For every move, theory, concept, principle, definition. That My, is uh, I see mind. mine's blowing. There's a what? Opposite, Opposite and, and reverse. reverse. So now we're going to put it all together. Here we go. Hook, kick, in, out, up, down, all the way down, up, out, in. See ya. Fun. Let's do the dance. All right, here we go. Step back, hook, kick, hooking wings, in, out, up, down. Turn their head away. 
So some people do a flat with a heel palm to the ear. It's supposed to hit him up on the chin, lift his head back and expose him. Some people will do an eye poke to the eyes to drive his head back. The guy's supposed to do, ah, either buy this or buy this. Some people will actually combine it, hit the heel palm and drop the finger poke in. So again, I block, I chop, I poke the heel palm. Now, Ed Parker did this, Al Tracy did this, David German, my other instructor, did this. When you hit somebody, it's not this. You pivot on the ball of foot, you drop your shoulder like a boxer, you bury this thing. <laughs> now, let me explain. If you do it right, you should be asking for air or throw up. <laughs> if he's puking his guts out, I move his head out of the way so he can go throw up. I pull his head down, let him keep throwing up, cock my hand back, and then I chop him in the back of the neck and take him out. So not only does he throw up, he falls as an old throw up, and he, he, he lays his own way. It's disgusting. Okay? That's the one they never tell you about, right? That's pretty gross, huh? All right, so that's five swords. So we step in. Block and chop. Chop out. Heel palm or eye poke. Pivot uppercut. Now, I'm going to take my back foot. I'm going to move out of the way, pull the back of his head, because he's puking. It's gross. It's disgusting. I pull down his head, and now the executioner's axe on the bottom, at least of, of our patch, whack! And uh, I'll talk about the eldest hand sword for a moment. Play a moment. Play a moment. Oh. He would do a technique, and Elvis would do a technique, and we finish the technique, we go, don't you ever touch me again. So then, bang, 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 bang! Don't you ever touch me again. <laughs> so when Elvis did this, he learned this from Mr. Parker. Because when he pulled the head down, not going to You could chop like this. Mr. Parker chopped like this. He would contour his hand. Can everybody see this? If you can't, turn it so you can. He would contour the inside of his wrist around the back. Now watch. I'm going to hit Daisy twice very lightly. Daisy, you tell me which one hurts more. And everybody will be able to tell you how little space I went. Yeah? That's one. <laughs> which one hurt more? Probably one or two. One or two? Second. Second one. And I'll tell you, you feel that, and that wraps like this around your neck. Mr. Parker almost knocked my contact in. It's like, bang, my I felt my contact. It's time to leave my eyes. I was like, ah! I had to close my eyes and push my eyes in my eyes. You could knock them out of my head. So it works. All right, so let's try it out. Ready? Let it up. Five swords. Block and chop. Chop out. Or from here, heel palm or eye poke or both. Drop your shoulder, pivot your foot, bury it. Move his head out of the way. He's busy going, Bleh! whack, finish it. Chop his head off. All right, that's five swords. Okay? Now, everybody got, understand that? No. Okay, pair off to it for a moment. Five times each first. Go, go, go. Five. Five swords against the inside of a right. What's the opposite of the inside of a right circular punch? The outside of a what? A left. Straight punch. Okay, what technique do we have against that? Shield mace. How about shield and mace? Oh, I like that one. Shield and, how about shield and sword? Yeah. Anybody have shield and sword? Yes. Yeah. So shield and sword is five swords against the outside of the straight left. Let's take a look. So the guy's coming in. I move off, but I'm moving off at an angle. So instead of stepping in, I step out. And I block with my hand, just like I do in five swords. But I caught this hand now. So the, the fist is still there, the sword's still there. Then I chop him in the side of the neck. Instead of chopping out, I chop in. The opposite of in is out, and the opposite of out is in. Then from there, I check his arm, and I hit him with an elbow. Instead of a circular strike that moves up on a vertical plane with my right hand, I take my left hand and I do a circular strike that moves on a horizontal plane. Then I do a rear crossover. Now before we learned to walk up the circle. Now we learn a different way to walk up the circle, which is doing a rear crossover and I bring my hand up again and I cock my other hand. Now I got double closed fist. So now I unwind and I hit him in one kidney the left kidney with my hammer fist, and then I roundhouse kick him in the other kidney and cross the cover up. Now, if we go through five swords, we go one, two, pa-pa, boom, boom, and later on when we do this, the next section is heel palm chop. 
It's part of the extension. Some people put it in as the base technique. Originally, it wasn't. I chop a guy in the back and they have to drop him in his own pew. Hey, guess what? Fight over. Okay? But they did the extension to teach you different things. So, now we do what? Shield and sword. Amazing. So, step off. Ah! Don't hit me. Chop him. Check him. Elbow him. Bow and bow. Cross over. Power the people right on. Unwind, hammer fist, roundhouse kick. Cross the cover out. Again. Techniques called what? Shield and sword. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait up. Okay, five times each other. Go, go, go. Okay, so I start doing five swords. I block and chop, I chop out, I heel palm, I uppercut. Moment I uppercut him, instead of throwing up on me, he shoots a left straight punch. I step out, I chop, I elbow, rear cross, elbow, boom, boom, boom. See ya! I grab right into shield and sword. So, what am I doing? Yes, sir. So, again, we start with the right roundhouse. So, he comes in, I block and chop. Notice the almighty Kenpo check. Well, right into his leg, lock it right out. I chop him. If his, head, if his head's not turned, great. I heel palm him here, or just poke him in the eyes and drive him back. Then, boom, I bury it. But suddenly that left hand goes, I'm going to punch you. No, straight. Straight right into the face. So I go, ah! That's scary. Why are you doing this to me? I'm such a nice guy. Why are you doing this? See you later. Bye. So now, hey, guess what? I'm dealing with a boxer. <laughs> right roundhouse, straight left. So again, five swords, block, chop, hit, boom, come on, hit me, ah, chop, elbow, rear cross over, boom, pow. <laughs> Got it? Okay, let's do one more time together. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, so again, five swords, block with the chop, chop out, heel palm or eye poke or bow, uppercut. Uh-oh, here comes that straight left. Step with your right foot, get out of the way, chop him in the neck, elbow him in the ribs. Cross over, check his arm again. Hammer fist, roundhouse. Mm. Pair off, Kevin. That's the last one from the night, Joe. Try. But when we do, no. Because what you do, come on, this is the important part. What you're really doing is you're doing an outward, downward, diagonal hammer fist. You are taking the kidney and you are putting it on the pubic bone, on the hip bone. And then you are popping it like a water balloon. You bust open the kidney. Which basically, she pees blood. It invades the poison, the beta system. She dies. And when I do this, just to make sure that she has to go on dialysis for the rest of her natural life, I kick her over. That's the nasty me just part. So, don't do it a lot. I think you do it occasionally, but don't do it to me. <laughs> don't do it to somebody else. But that's really what's happening. It's like taking a water balloon, putting it on a rocket, hitting it with a hammer. <laughs> Welcome to Kempo. All right, right out. Without, without that water balloon part, okay? All right, not that part. You may look at this and say, look, Mr. Bell, with all due respect, there's no way I'm going to remember this. You're going to ask me to remember. Pretty much, I don't know how I'm going to remember this. Well, it's simple. How many people are on the internet? Raise your hands. Cool. Both of these techniques are shown on the video on my YouTube channel. So you can go and watch them, and if you can't remember, go look. So it'll help and you get to see me work with different people on and explain about that. And that's grafting. That's how to go from one technique to the other seamlessly with no major pauses or hesitation. That's the beauty of Kenton. I want to take a moment and say the following. You are incredibly lucky. You are incredibly fortunate. I've been wanting to meet your instructor for 15 years. I used to read about him in magazines. I used to watch him on the internet. And I always wanted to meet Robert Austin. And I saw this picture of this damn handsome man, with what he said, standing there in his pose and his cross cut gear. And I'm going, that indeed is a damn handsome man, I tell you. And he must have <laughs> lots of knowledge in his head. And we started to talk to each other, and we found that we really had a lot in common. We shared a lot of the same ideas, principles, concepts, and had a lot of the same uh, interrelationship in different martial arts besides Kempo. And that's the, really the beauty of what you do. Anybody, let no one ever tell you that your system is not viable and effective. 
I have to agree to it. I'm I love the, the process with the five animals, uh, with the with the four levels. And you're very fortunate, and you're doing Mr. Parker's system. If they says you want, you take your phone, you put the thing in there, and that is what you tell me. Stand up. Sir. Sir. I will finish the pass on him. So I'm going to. I have to teach you a very important thing. Sometimes this stuff gets to you, right? And you're like, ah. So at that point, you have to learn the Kempo cheer. I will teach you the Kempo cheer, John. Put your hand off her. Take your hand off that girl. Anyway. Give me a B. 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 Give me another B. 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 Give me another B. B. Give me another B. 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 Give me another B. B. What's it spell? <laughs> and that, right, you learn these techniques. Sometimes you're like, good. What? You know? What's my name? What day is it? <laughs> what? I'm a boy girl? I don't know. I'm all noisy. Just take it. Right? Me too. Mr. Parker would teach me stuff sometimes, and I'd be like, what? <laughs> really? What day is it? Can I go home and have a cookie? I don't know. What? You know? Mm -hmm. And it, it'll get to you. But if you practice this diligently and work this material, you'll feel so much fun. There's so much joy and happiness in this. Last but not least, founder of Aikido, Modei Yoshiba, said a wonderful phrase. He said, the highest level of martial arts is love. Love what you do. Love the prayers that you do when you do this. Love the place where you learn this. Love, love life. Love camp and love the martial arts. And if you do that right, you're going to get a smile just like she has. She's got a great smile. <laughs> As she suddenly like, geeks on and hides behind her friend. She's got that winning <laughs> don't, smile. Don't, don't show my face, please. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a section of the seminar. <laughs> hey. Did you have fun? Yes. Yes. Learn a new way of looking at something you already ladies. Learn a new way of doing something that you already do. Cool. Because when a person really attacks you, most times and most masters I've had to have dealt with that experience, I get a phone call. What I do, I wasn't there. But what did I do? This guy's arms are broken in four places, or not against this, or did that. I have no idea what I did. All I know I did it. And really, on the highest level of self-defense, you have absolutely no clue what you did. You just moved. That's the key. Attention. That's all enough. I want to tell you what a joy, what an honor, what a privilege it was to work with each and every one of you. And I want to tell you, it was fun. It was a great joy. And I had a great time, and I hope you did too. And I hope I made you laugh and smile and giggle and go... That dude's just nuts. <laughs> he's like, he's lost it, you know? It's like the, like, the, like who's talking now with the baby looking at the lady, going, boo boo. And you go, yeah, she's completely lost it. <laughs> All the best people have. All the best people. Last story. I'm with Mr. Parker, 1988, seminar in New Bedford. And I go, you know what, Mr. Parker? You're a genius. He goes, I don't know about that, Joseph. I said, why, Mr. Parker? He goes, Joseph, most geniuses are crazy. <laughs> I hope I'm not. All right, let's take us up and go over in your mind what we worked on in this class. Eyes open, look at me, see what I think, please. From the moment somebody walks in the door here, they feel something really special. We're quite different than a lot of martial arts schools because I really see this as a success school or a place where uh, lives get transformed. Our system that we teach here is a blended system. We call it International Kempo Karate. The difference for us is really around our philosophy in that it's more emphasis on nonviolence and on personal empowerment and teaching lifelong skills. And even things as simple as public speaking. And those are the things far beyond any kick or punch that a child will learn here or an adult that will carry over into their life and really make a difference for the rest of their life. I think the instructors here are truly second to none. You know, good teaching, I think, is a combination of having some tested experience and then being content experts, but also the delivery of that. And they do a great job at that. I love that I can come here and feel at home and know that I'm going to get the help I need from all the instructors.
It is just a friendly, caring atmosphere that you feel totally safe in. It's not really just a school, it's a home. My daughters are way more focused. They're learning about discipline and the rights and wrongs. The amount of confidence I've gained through my five years here has increased very much. Come in here and just try it. Seeing that transformation and that sense of community and acceptance that makes me want to keep doing this and makes it all worthwhile. Hey, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. I really like this uh, uniform that uh, the UMAA and again, Professor Austin and James were kind enough to pass along to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to being a member of the UMAA and also in assisting various martial arts through their organization in the various events. I was also very honored at the event to receive a Kenpo Pioneer Award for my various study and uh, works in the art of Kenpo, uh, not only locally, but throughout the state the country, and around the world. Uh, it was an honor and a privilege to have studied with Ed Parker, as well as Grandmaster David German, and demonstrate their arts and their skills at the UMAA Kempo Camp. I'd like to thank Professor Austin and uh, Renshi uh, James Denning for all their help and assistance and believing in me. And uh, again, thank you, gentlemen. And thank all of you for watching Rebello's Kempo Karate. For more information, please stay tuned to the end of the show for contact information regarding the UMAA and also their studios, the International Black Boat Academies. Until next time, keep training.